and welcome to our discussion of the manufacturing overhead budget. With this one, we're dealing with, again, still product-related costs, still manufacturing costs, but they're not direct materials, they're not direct labor, instead they're manufacturing overhead. So this one is, again, it's another one of our product costs budgets. So what I mean by that is that we've already done the sales budget, we've already done the production budget, and now we have three different costs that are needed to fulfill our production. We have materials and labor. We've already done those two budgets in previous sections. And now we're dealing with the manufacturing overhead budget, which is basically whatever's left. Now, I do want to mention one thing. We're talking about overhead here, but again, this is manufacturing overhead. There's another type of overhead budget that we'll see later called the selling general administrative budget. That's more office or store overhead. Here, this is manufacturing overhead. There are a lot of similarities between the two, but there are some very important differences as well. One important thing to note is that we're dealing with variable and fixed overhead. We're going to have both. We'll see examples of both. So that's part of the complexity. This is a relatively easy budget, but part of the complexity is just determining which type of cost is variable, which is fixed. So here is a example or an illustration of the budgets we've gone through up to this point. I said we've done the sales and production budgets already and now we're into our three overhead cost budgets. So with this we see a lot of linkage between the various budgets. Production obviously leads to each of these green production cost budgets including manufacturing overhead. Manufacturing overhead is actually going to link to two different things as well. Well, really three, I guess you could argue. Manufacturing overhead is going to link to cash because we're going to spend money to pay for some of these bills, but not all of them. And what I mean by that is depreciation. We're going to see this a couple of times. Depreciation of factory equipment is certainly a manufacturing overhead cost, but it's not a cash cost in this particular year because we paid the cash for that asset way back in year one when we first bought it, and maybe we're in year three or four, we're just depreciating it, but we're not paying any more cash. So it leads to the cash budget. It also, I ran out of some space there, but it leads to the income statement as well, because again, if we have that, uh, whatever we've, we've purchased, eventually it's going to lead to the income statement through cost of goods sold. That's part of the reason I didn't put the linkage there is because it doesn't link immediately to cost of goods sold. All these manufacturing overhead costs, they first get built up into the, the product cost itself, and then it depends on when do we sell the product. Whenever we do eventually sell it, all that material, labor, and overhead cost becomes an expense. But until then, it's actually part of the inventory, which would go to the balance sheet. So there are a couple things we need to know to be able to fill this out. We need to know the variable overhead rate, which is a, a lot of times it's just a dollar amount per machine hour or per labor hour. I just generically refer to it as a cost driver unit here, but again, usually that's hours. Now, a fixed overhead amount, it really doesn't depend on how much we produce that period. Fixed overhead is the same for the entire period, whether we produce one unit or 100 units or 1,000. There's obviously a limit. We can't just stay in the same factory and produce 10 million units, but within a relevant range, it's going to be fixed. That's the whole point of fixed overhead. So we need to know what that amount is per period, and you'll generally see it broken down by type. Maybe not in great detail, but categories of costs. Now, again, only one really behaves on a per unit basis or per hour basis, but we can actually determine a kind of a merged predetermined overhead rate per unit and or hour that includes both fixed and variable. The problem is, anytime you try to do that with fixed cost, you try to unitize fixed cost, it will only work if that activity level is exactly that same amount. As soon as we produce fewer or more units, our fixed overhead per unit actually changes just because we're dividing it by a different number. The different types of fixed overhead costs, some examples, depreciation for buildings and machines, anything related to the factory. 
We have supervisor salaries. And again, these are factory supervisors. Any salary amount, that implies it's a fixed amount per unit. So here we could have factory supervisors. We could also have salaries for the factory support staff, security, janitorial, basically a salary for anybody in the factory that's not working on the product itself. It's unusual to have actual factory workers that are working on the product be salaried. I guess it's not unheard of, it's just unusual, and you're not generally going to see that in these textbook type questions. Rent, so if we didn't buy the building, if we just rent it instead, that would be a fixed overhead because it doesn't relate to the actual activity level. We produce 10 units or 100 units, we still have the same rent. Some types of variable overhead costs, one of them we have to discuss just a bit, utilities. So for the most part, utilities are variable because if you run the factory three shifts instead of two shifts to produce more units, you're going to have more overhead, more utilities. But there, if you, if you shut the factory down completely and you don't produce any units for a month, you're still going to have a utility bill and it's going to be that base rate. So there's generally a based fixed rate that has to be, uh, it's just added to your bill before you start getting charged per kilowatt hour or whatever. Supplies, depending on what they are and how they're treated, they could possibly be variable uh, to an extent. And what I mean by that is that the more units you produce, you're probably going to use also more supplies. It's not necessarily variable for every single unit. It could be, but maybe not but it's variable just for ranges of units. So it's kind of a step cost in a way. And a big one, probably the biggest, well, I guess, yeah, any hourly wages for support staff in the factory. So it's not people working on the product, it's still support staff, but they're hourly wages now instead of salaries. This would be variable. And now the other thing about this, indirect materials, which, you know, it's kind of rolled up under supplies, but there might be other indirect materials as well. The more production you have, you're going to have more of these indirect materials. They don't directly relate to any unit of product, or at least you don't want to try to measure it accordingly, but they do have a relationship to the range of production you're in. Now, again, just like before, you can actually determine a predetermined overhead rate per hour or unit that merges these two together just for planning or pricing purposes. So now we're on to the budget itself. And again, this is a pretty straightforward budget. It's everything is within its own month. We don't have any carry forward or pull back. So it's all about how many units do we produce that period, for at least for variable. So notice we're going to have just one variable overhead rate per unit. All of our variable costs have been merged into one bucket and we've already developed a rate per unit. So in this case, it's not even per hour, or if it is, they're not telling us how many hours. Uh, oh yeah, it's just per unit, because we're going to be multiplying it by the number of units up here, and that's perfectly fine. Sometimes they'll do that. 475 per unit, it's going to stay that way throughout the period. So 10,400 times 475 per unit gives us $49,400. That's our budgeted variable overhead. Plus, we're going to add in a couple of fixed items, fixed overhead depreciation, and then budgeted overhead utilities, insurance, and property tax. So here, they're kind of merging utilities in with a fixed item. You know, maybe you have a steady amount you pay each period. It just kind of depends on the situation. Here, they're just telling us it's 2500 Total budgeted overhead, when you add in your variable and your fixed, your two fixed costs, you have 56400 for April. Now that would, again, be your budgeted overhead. The only way it would be expected to change is if our activity level changes a little bit, which gives us more variable overhead. But what they may want to do in this case is get a predetermined total overhead rate per hour or per unit. It's not a requirement. You won't always see this on the problems. But for planning purposes, it might be handy. When we talk about variance analysis in another discussion altogether, you can see these rates are handy. So we take the 56,400 and divide it by, and this should actually not be a dollar amount, uh, just a direct labor hours. So they gave us a number for each of the three periods. 
and this tells us we have about two dollars and seventy one cents per hour so what that means is when we have more units coming in or if they take more time than expected we're going to apply more overhead to them you can see the rate changes just because of the fact that the activity level has changed remember our fixed overhead both items were the exact same and our 475 was per unit so obviously as we produce more units that part's going to increase but the fact that the budgeted overhead rate per unit or per hour decreases is because we're spreading the same fixed cost over more units which makes the per unit rate less so that's what we have for the quarterly total here and again that is the manufacturing overhead budget so hopefully this has helped to clarify the process for complete a manufacturing overhead budget we'll be using this and this is one of the things you'll be uh, tested on in various textbooks you'll see various problems related to it but again thank you for your time